have seen how to construct a contingency table or in other words how to summarize the bivariate data where both my variables are categorical in nature as a contingency table. Now we introduce a very important concept the concept of a relative frequency. We introduced these concepts when we looked at single categorical variable. Recall re relative frequency was nothing but your frequency by total number of observations. Relative frequency is what we refer to when we talked about categorical variables as frequency into total number of observations. We have already introduced the notion of a relative frequency. But what do we have in a contingency table? In a contingency table for example, I had a female, I had a male, I had 44 females and I had 56 males. I had 76 people who owned a cell phone. I had 24 people who did not own a cell phone. Okay, this was what was my data. So, you can go back to your data here. We are talking about this data here. So, I have 70 in this data set. You can see that I had 44, 56. Then I have also I have 42 men and 34 women owned a cell phone. So, 10 women and I have again 14 men did not own a cell phone. Okay. So, this is recall this is the contingency table I have. Now, this is my row total. What is my row total? 44 females and 56 men, 24 and my 76 represent or are my column totals. You can see that the total of the row totals and the total of the column totals are equal and they add up to 100. Okay. So, now suppose I am interested in asking a question what is the proportion of total participants who own a phone? Now, that is simple. Total participants are 100 of which 76 people own a phone and 24 people do not own a phone. So, 76 out of 100 people actually own a phone. In other words, this is the proportion of my total participants who own a phone. Similarly, 24 out of 100 people do not own a phone. So, this answer to this question is easily given that the proportion of total participants who own a phone is 76 percentage. Now, let me modify this question a bit and ask that what is the proportion of female participants who own a phone. Now, what do, how do I answer this question? Again, if you go back here, you can see that there are totally 44 female participants of which 34 participants own a phone. Okay. So, the proportion of female participants who own a phone is 34 divided by 44. Of the total number of female participants, how many female participants we have totally? 44. Of them, I am asking what is the proportion who own a phone? 34 by 44. Similarly, I will have 10 by 44 is the proportion of female participants who do not own a phone. Likewise, 14 by 56 is the proportion of male participants who do not own a phone and 42 by 56 is the proportion of male participants who own a phone. Now, what is this 10 by 44, 34 by 44, 14 by 56 and 42 by 56? 
these are what we refer to as the rho relative frequency. What is a rho relative frequency? I divide each cell frequency by its rho total. So, I divide this by 44, this by 44, this by 56 and this by 56. Of course, for the column this total also I know 24 by 100 and 76 by 100. So, I know 76 percent of my total participants owned a phone and 24 percent of my total participants did not own a phone. And once I do this, I see that these are in percentages, 77.27 percent of the total female participants own a phone. That is what this number gives me, 75 percent of total male participants own a phone, 76 percent of the total participants own a phone. So, what you have in these cells are what are referred to as the rho relative frequencies. Now, let us look at the second example. In the second example, I do the same thing. I know the rho totals were 20 for a high income group. Two people did not own a phone. So, 2 by 20 which is a 10 percent, 18 by 20 which is 90 percent. So, the way I can articulate this is of the high income group or 90 percent of the high income group people own a phone whereas 10 percent of the high income group do not own a phone. In the medium income group 40 percent or 41 percent of medium income group do not own a phone, 60 percent own a phone or 59 percent own a phone. If this is 41 percent, this is 59 percent own a phone. Whereas, in the low income group, I have a whopping 64 percent who do not own phones and a 36 percent who own phones. In total, I have 38 people who do not own, 38 percent who do not own and 62 percent who own a phone. So, these are what we refer to as rho relative frequencies. Similar to the rho relative frequency, I have what is called column relative frequencies. Now, what are the type of questions we are expected to answer here? Let us go back to our contingency table here. Okay. So, now I want to know what is the proportion of total participants who were female. I have 100 participants. The proportion is 44 by 100. So, I have 44 percent female and 56 percent male participants. Now, of the people who own smartphones, so I have 76 people who own smartphones. I want to know among this what is the proportion of females among the smartphone owners. The answer to this question is total number of smartphone owners are 76 of which 34 of them are female. So, the proportion of people among the smartphone owners who are females are 34 by 76. Proportion of male people who are owners are 42 by 76. Proportion of female non-owners are 10 by 24. Proportion of male non-owners are 14 by 24. These values 10 by 24, 14 by 24, 34 by 76 and 42 by 76 are what we refer to as a column relative frequency. How do we obtain the column relative frequency? We divide each frequency by their respective column totals, we get the column re relative frequency. So, you can see the relative frequency is 41 percent of 
non-owners are female, whereas 58 percent of non-owners are male, whereas when it comes to owning a cell phone, 44 percent are female and about 55 percent are male, totally 44 percent female and 56 percent are male. So, these are the column relative frequencies. Now, let us look at the row and column relative frequencies for the second example which was the income versus the ownership of a smartphone. Now, when you look at the column row relative frequency, column relative frequency for the second example, you see that 20 percent high income, 66 percent medium income and 14 percent low income group. Now, among the owners, you can see that among the people who own a phone, 29 percent of the people who own a phone are from the high income, 63 are from medium and a low 8 percent are from the low income group. Now, when it comes to the people who do not own a phone, you see only 5 percent are from the high income group, 71 percent are from the medium and 24 percent from the low income group. So, this is how you compute the relative frequency. We have introduced the concept of a relative frequency. In particular, we have seen how to compute the row relative frequency and the column relative frequency. We now will see how to use the concept of a row relative frequency and a column relative frequency to answer questions about association between variables. So, now we address the uh, question which we started this module with or this lecture with by wanting to answer whether there is an association between two variables. We first introduced how to set up what we call a contingency table. A contingency table basically summarizes your bivariate data. Then we introduce the notion of both a row relative frequency to compute the row relative frequency, you measured each or you divided each cell frequency by its row total and then we also introduce the notion of a column relative frequency where again I divided each cell frequency by its column total. Now, we will see how to use this concept of a row relative frequency and a column relative frequency to answer whether there is an association between two variables or not. So, what is what do we mean by saying or stating that two variables are associated? In other words, we want to know that whether information about one variable provides some information about another variable. So, when we are seeking to answer the question whether two variables are associated, actually what we are seeking to answer is whether if I have information about a particular variable, whether it actually gives me something or tells me something about the other variable. So, to determine whether two categorical variables are associated, we will now show how we use the notion of relative row frequencies and relative column frequencies. So, let us look at our relative row or column frequencies, we already know how to compute these frequencies. If the row relative frequency or the column relative frequencies are the same for all rows, I repeat, if the row relative frequency or the column relative frequencies are the same for all rows or columns, then we say the two variables are not associated with each other.
if the row relative frequency or the column relative frequencies are different for some rows, then we say that the two variables are associated with each other. Okay? So, if the row relative or the column relative are same, we say they are not associated. If the row relative frequency or the column related frequency are different, then we say they are associated with each other. So, let us go back to our examples to and apply this rule which compares the row relative frequency and the column relative frequency. Okay? So, let us look at this example. In this example, where I plotted or I tabulated the gender versus ownership of a phone, you can see that when it comes to a ownership of a phone, 24 percent of my total population did not own a phone, 76 percent owned a phone. Now, if I am looking at the pattern within the genders, you see again 23 percent of the females did not own a phone and about 77 percent of the females owned a phone. When it comes to male, again I see about 25 percent did not own a phone and 75 percent owned a phone. So, you see that the ownership pattern which is 24 percent not owning and 76 percent owning a phone is consistent with both the female subgroup and the male subgroup you do not see any inconsistencies. That is both when you look at females also you see that about 23 percent are not owning and 77 percent are owning. In the male also we see about 25 percent are not owning and 75 percent are owning. So, in general the ownership pattern does not change depending on the gender. Let us look at the column frequencies. Again, if you look at the column frequencies, I had 44 percent female and 56 percent male. Now, if you look at only owners of the 76 people, again I see about, about 45 percent are female and 55 percent are males, which is ex almost the same as my total gender diversity. This same percentage among people who do not own a phone, again I have about 42 percent females and 58 percent males. So, the gender diversity also among owners of a phone and not owners of a phone is also the same that is 44 percent and around 44 percent and 56 percent. So, both the row relative frequencies and the column relative frequencies are the same for all the rows and columns. Hence, I can say that both my gender and smartphone are not associated with each other which is consistent with the definition earlier. Okay? Now, let us look at the second example. When I look at the second example, I plot both the row relative frequencies. What are my row relative frequencies here? So, you have here I, what were the two variables? The income level and whether you own a phone or not. Again, let us look at it. In the first case, I know 38 percent do not own a phone and 62 percent own a phone. But when you look at the high income group, you see that 90 percent own a phone and 10 percent do not own a phone, whereas in the low income group 65 percent do not own a phone and 36 percent own a phone. So, you can see that whether you own a phone or not is playing the percentages of ownership of a phone actually is different for the high income group and the low income group. The row relative frequencies 
are not the same among the categories. If you look at the column relative frequencies, again I have a distribution of 20 percent, 66 percent and 14 percent in my high, medium and low income groups. If I just look at the owners, I have 62 people who are owners of which I have about 30 percent who are coming from the high income group and only a 8 percent who come from the low income group. Among the non owners, I have a 5 percent who are from the high income group and a whopping 24 percent who are from the low income group. This is not consistent with my total distribution of my income categories. Since the row frequencies and the column frequencies are different among the rows and the column, I can say that the income and smartphone ownership are actually associated with each other, which is very intuitive. You would expect the ownership of a phone to actually be associated with your income level, whereas the ownership of a phone need not be associated with whether you are a female or a male. And we have seen that both the examples which actually have demonstrated this phenomena. So, we have seen how we can use the concept of a relative frequency to decide whether two variables are associated or not. We again recall, we said that if the row relative frequencies or the column re relative frequencies are same for all the rows and columns, we say two variables are not associated with each other. If they are same, if they are not same or if they are different, we say that they are associated with each other. And we demonstrated this through the two examples which we have been discussing. Now, how do I graphically show this result? So, again let us go back to our examples here. See that we have a contingency table. So, for that what I do is I construct what is called a stat bar chart or sometimes it is also referred to as a segmented bar chart. So, a bar chart summarizes the data for a categorical variable where the length of the bars were representing the frequency of occurrence of a particular category. This is what a bar chart does. Now, a stack bar chart represents the counts for a particular category. In addition, each bar is further broken down to smaller segments. Now, let us illustrate what we mean by this. Now, if you are looking at a bar chart, for the first example, I had two categories, the female category and the male category. Among the female, I had 44 females and 56 males and you see that, okay, this is my bar chart. Now, what is a stacked bar chart? Now, if I want the second category to be superimposed on this, what do I mean by this? Again, you go back to your contingency table, you see that out of 44 in the first example, okay, I have out of 44 people, I have 77.27 who own a phone that was this was 30 actually among the 44 people I have 77 point. So, this was 34 and this was 10. Okay. This was how I had it and this was a 14, 46. Right. This was not 46. This was a 14 and this was a 42. Right. So, I if I now given this bar chart, okay, I know that 77 percent so, I have constructed this bar chart. 
In this, I want to know what percentage of these female own a phone. So, what I can do in that case is I can look at a percentage. Okay. Let me look at another color. So, I have about 77 percent of this who own a phone. Okay approximately this is about 77 percent. So, of this 44 I have about 77 percent. Similarly, here I have the same percentage who own the phone here. Okay, so, this purple shaded area represents the number of people or the proportion of people within each category who own a phone. I have about 77 percent who own a phone and this green shaded area represents the proportion of people among females who do not own a phone and this green area here represents the proportion of males who do not own a phone. So, the difference between a stacked bar chart and a bar chart is when I had only the female and male category, I could have. So, this entire bar represented the count of female and this entire bar represented which was 56 represented the count of female whereas, a stacked bar chart in addition to the, so what you can see that in addition to the count of a particular category, it breaks it down into smaller segments. So, I have broken down this entire bar of 44 into smaller segment, here again two segments where this segment represents the owners of or the female owners and the green segment represents the female non-owners. Similarly, this segment represents the male owners and this segment represents the male non-owners of the graph. So, since you have the segmented bars, it is called a segmented bar chart or it is also known as a stacked bar chart. How do we construct a stacked bar chart using Google Sheets? Okay. So, now we go back to the contingency table which we had already constructed. I select the data for which I have the contingency table. I am selecting the gender and the no yes. I go to insert chart. In an insert chart, I am looking at a stacked column chart. Okay. You can see that I am looking at a stacked column chart. Okay. And the stacking is, so you can see that this is the stacked column chart of which you can also see that I have two genders. Here I have a female, I have a male, okay. This is the gender I have, and within the female I have 44, within the male I have 76. 77 percent of the female gender is actually owning a phone. The red color indicates yes, the blue color indicates no. Again, or close to 77 percent of male own a phone, again yes. So, within the male bar I have indicated how many own a phone and how many do not own a phone. So, you can see that a stacked bar chart is a good way of summarizing the ownership or in a graphical way. Now, you can go back to your Google sheet and you can see that this stacked bar chart give me the actual counts. But suppose I am interested and this was what we referred to as a standard stacked bar chart. So, you can go to a chart style, go to setup, I have a stacked column chart. Under stacking, you can see that I have 
listed the standard option. But if I click on what I call a 100 percent stacked bar chart, what a 100 percent stacked bar chart gives me is you can see that of if I consider it does not give me the actual counts of a female and male, but what a 100 percent stacked bar chart gives me is the proportion of females who own a phone to the proportion who do not own and similarly the proportion of males who own a phone to proportion who do not own. Now, where is a 100 percent stacked bar chart useful to me? Now, suppose I go to a 100 percent stacked bar chart. So, where is a 100 percent stacked bar chart useful? You can see that when I am actually not interested in knowing the count of each category, but I am interested in knowing about a part to whole relationship or the proportional relationship, I can use what is a 100 percent stacked bar chart. Here you can see it very visualize, visually it is showing me that the distribution or ownership of a phone to not having a phone for the category female and male is almost the same. You do not see any sizable difference between the ownership pattern and gender. For the second example, when you look at a stacked bar chart, now if you look at this chart, I have the category 1. 1 you recall was associated with the high income group, 2 was associated with the medium income group, 3 was associated with the low income group. Again the order I either have to maintain a low, medium, high order or a high, medium, low order. This you have to maintain the order. You cannot have a low, high, medium order because it is an ordinal data maintain the order in which you represent the variables. Now, if you look at this high income group, yes is the purple, green is the no, you can see that among the high income group, you have more people who own the phone to people who do not own the phone. In the low income group, you have more people who do not own the phone to people who own the phone. And in the medium income group, it is almost you have equal number of people who own a phone to do not own a phone. Graphically, this is very clear. Now, how does a 100 percent stacked bar chart look for this example? Now, if you look at a 100 percent stacked bar chart where I am not interested in the actual counts, but I am interested in looking at how the 100 percent stack bar chart looks, you can see this very clearly. In the high income group, I have a lot of people who own the phone. In the low income group, I have this green is higher than the purple. Green is the number of people who do not own the phone. Whereas, for medium, I have equal number of the proportion of people who own the phone is equal to the proportion of people who do not own a phone. So, you can see a hundred when you are not interested in the actual counts, but you are interested in comparing these groups with each other to tell you a story, a hundred percent stacked bar chart is very useful. And this story is since you do not you see a varying pattern, we can reaffirm what we saw from the column and row relative frequency that income and ownership are associated with each other. Whereas, when we looked at gender versus ownership, they were almost the same, gender and ownership are not associated with each other. So, at the end of this section, you should know, you should be able to use the concept of relative frequency to tell whether two variables are associated with each other. You further validate it through a graphical summary. This graphical summary is what we refer to as a stacked bar chart.